¡Woo! Que lo que, bienvenidos a otro video. My Spanish sucks. What I said was, welcome back to another the video. So, let's do that all again. What is up everybody, welcome back to another video. Hope y'all have an amazing day too as well. I'm back for a YouTube video. Before we get into today's video, please make sure to like, subscribe, and always comment down below. It really, really helps out the video. So today we're gonna be making a churrasco mofongo. Um, and I know there's probably gonna be a lot of people out there that do not know what uh, churrasco mofongo is. Um, now, churrasco and mofongo are two different things. So, churrasco is steak in Spanish. Um, so, we're going to make a steak and a mofongo. Mofongo is, uh, it's either Dominican or Puerto Rican. Um, some people say it's Dominican, others say Puerto Rican. I think it's kind of both. So, what it is, is just mashed up plantains with like chicken broth, garlic, uh, pork rinds. So, let me show you guys what y'all need to make mofongo. It is so good. Usually, it's served with like a gravy or a uh, chimichurri. So... I don't know if I have the ingredients for a chimichurri. Um, I probably got gravy, so I think I'll just use gravy in this case. Um, so let me show y'all what you need. So this is everything you're gonna need for your mufongo. So the first thing we got is the steak, the churrasco. Now we got these plantains, okay? Now you should use green plantains. I can't tell if this is a green or a yellow plantain because what's, cra what's crazy is when I got this one at the supermarket the other day, it was green and now it looks kind of like these two are kind of shifting towards yellow but these are definitely green uh you want to use green ideally we need some uh chicken broth right here so we got some pork rinds or chicharrones i like i love pork rinds am i crazy i feel like nobody eats pork rinds i like them we got a little bit of lime some garlic and some gravy the gravy's optional though um but mofongo can dry out really easily and a gravy just adds such a nice flavor to it i gotta say um, so first we need to fry these plantains. So, well, re really we need to peel them first. So let's peel and fry the plantains or the plantanos. Plantain number one, let's cut this part off. Okay. Um, I'm gonna start like this. When you have green plantains, you can't really peel them. I know yellow plantains are a lot easier to peel. Um, green plantains are very, um, they're also very starchy and they're better for savory things. But it, uh, if you want something sweet, always go with the yellow plantain. Plantains are used in almost everything Dominican and Puerto Rican like, so. So this is what I gotta do basically. They also brown really, uh, really quick when you leave them out. Um, I really don't know how to peel a green plantain, so I, I use my knife and I'm trying to be careful so I get as much of the plantain in the mofongo as I can possibly get it. So let's just keep going here. Okay, there's still like gonna be a little green bit so I could just get that off like that, just like that. So um, for garnish, I want to have like a, a plantain, sh like a strip or like a plantain chip on the top because that's just going to look really good aesthetically. So what I'm going to do for that is I am going to cut this part, go down the middle right here. And uh, what we're going to notice here is you get like this beautiful interior. Um, now I want to make sure it looks uniform, so I'm just going to go underneath like this. I want it to be nice and crispy too. Okay. Boom. I like little plantain strips. So now we just cut the rest into nice thin slices here. Look how fast I can chop things. My chopping skills are on point, but peeling these plantains is not easy. So I'll just leave the scraps to the side and I'll cut the rest of them up. Let's drop our plantains in the oil. Why does it take the oil so long to get hot? By the way, those ones that were turning yellow were sweet plantains. I'm gonna put some sweet plantains in here. 
It should be okay. Okay. Come on. Okay, I'm gonna try to put them all in at once. We don't need to deep fry here. We can just like flash fry. And then I'm gonna put in uh, the strip later. I'm doing. I'm literally mixing these around with a knife. There we go. So while the plantains fry, I'm gonna um, turn on the grill. I already turned it on. Now I just need to throw a match in here. These matches are not working that well. Like, watch. This one probably it probably won't work on the first try, but we'll see. Oh! Ah! Go in. Go in there. Woo! So while we wait for the grill to heat up, I probably want it to be at like 300 or 400 before we put the steak in. Got our steak right here. So first I gotta unwrap the steak. Okay. And all we need for, well first I just wanna thin it out a little bit because I, I, I hate eating rare steaks. It's like medium rare or medium for me. So I'm trying to flatten it as much as I can. I think this is a good size right here. So now I just need to season it up with salt and pepper. That's all you need on a steak. Beef has a lot. Like when when you're with when you when you have like chicken or pork, you gotta season that properly with like spices. But beef has so much flavor on its own that you don't really need anything. Okay, we're just gonna rub seasoning around. That's our steak right there. How hot is it? Okay, it's at about 200. Why is it smoking so much? I think it needs to be clean, y'all. Ah, don't get a stick in there. Okay, I think that's why it was smoking up so much. All right, I just turned off the heat. I don't want them to be brown. I just want them to be nice and soft. Golden crispy. Grab these Johns out of the fryer. And then I'm just gonna fry up the strip for a little bit. Or the plant, plantain chip. Gotta turn the heat back on. Watch this. Bro, the oil's never hot. Come on. Y'all wouldn't believe this, okay? You guys see me use my grill several times on this channel and this shit's never happened. The inside caught on fire because for some reason, like the thing that covered the grill caught fire. I don't know what led to the fire. So this is actually my first time using a fire extinguisher. It's actually easier than I thought it would be. Just want to make sure oh my god look at the side of it i didn't do it anything differently either like that's what's crazy oh jesus christ so now i'm cooking the steak in a pan i'm gonna put throw that in here again the oil's not hot like i need to figure this crap out Let's see what the color is looking like. Oh! Time to make the mofongo. So we got the plantains in here. I'm gonna throw in some garlic. Throw in our fresh garlic right here. Our two chardones, pork rinds. Just crumble them up. Throw them in here. This is just gonna add some flavor. Some saltiness, some smokiness. Beautiful. So now, okay, let me lower the heat for the steak. I don't want to burn the steak. Um, okay. 
Now we're just gonna, I'm just gonna start off with a little bit of chicken broth, not too much, and just a squeeze of lime. You can also put a little oil in it too. So now I just have to mash it up, kind of like I'm mashing up mashed potatoes. And then I'll taste it if I need to, ow, dang it, got a cut on my hand and then I just got some lime juice on there. So if I need to add more of something, I will. Let me just mash it up for now. So the other night we had Domino's and no one used the garlic butter. So I'm just gonna put some on the steak. Looks like lard, don't it? Look at that. That is like liquid gold right here. I'm gonna put the oven on before another fire happens. <laughs> I'm also making a pineapple drink in case y'all are curious why there's a pineapple there. Just bathe it in the butter, baby. So a good way to tell if your steak is cooked is if, see how it's like not bringing back? That means it's rare in the center. So I'm gonna just leave it for a little longer. So I put my uh, mofongo on the plate. Now what I need to do is I need to turn this into like, kind of like a ball type of shape. If you ever get, if you ever um, have mufongo at a restaurant, first off, I want to take out these bits that uh, are not fully cooked. Let me, I tried to mash everything as hard as I can, but mufongo is not easy to make. It's actually very hard to make. Most Spanish food is not really easy to make, you know what I mean? It's not like making a burger, you know what I mean? Like you, you've seen how much technique making mufongo takes. So what I need to do right here I need to make it look really uniform because that's how you would get it at a restaurant, right? Like this kind of. Except, let's make it look a little taller, okay? Let's clean the plate too because right now presentation is pretty important, so. I'm just gonna throw this in the microwave because it is cold. Mufongo is supposed to be eaten hot. I have the gravy ready. The steak's still resting, so I just need to make my pineapple drink and we'll be all good to go. Here is our churrasco mufongo. So the mufongo is nice and hot with our nice little garnish in there. Honestly, it could look a little bit better, but look at the beef. Perfect, medium to medium rare, kind of. We got this gravy right here. We got my pineapple drink, my virgin pina colada right here. It's really good. Uh, so now I'm going to try this. All right, let's try it without the gravy first. Might be a little dry. Mmm. It's not dry at all. It's actually very good. Let's put some gravy on it, though. Now, the gravy makes it even better. Wow. It's like mashed but These are kind of like mashed potatoes almost. Mmm. Nice and hot. Got a nice piece of steak right here. Pretty good. Overall, I rate this dish probably like a 7 out of 10. Not the best thing I made, but it's pretty good. That's going to be for today's video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and God bless all you guys.